The Fountain, directed by Darren Aronofsky, portrays Tom as a narcissist who is constantly trying to find a cure for shrinking brain tumours for his dying wife, Izzy. It looks like he's doing all this research for her, but in fact he's being self-centred, only thinking about himself and how it benefits him. He wants to keep Izzy alive so he does not have to live without her and so he can feel superior over her. He also displays extreme selfishness. He ignores the wants and needs of his dying wife. Through the use of camera techniques, dialogue and mise-en-scene, Aronofsky is able to achieve this look. I have too much work. It's the first snow we always... They're waiting on me. Come on, Tommy. Please, Izzy. In this scene, we see President Tom being self-centered. Although it may look like he's doing research in order to find a cure, he's making the situation about himself by isolating himself from society and Izzy. He is only thinking of what he can get out of it. By finding a cure, he is keeping Izzy alive for him, so he does not have to live without her, so he does not have to share her with the rest of the world. He is being self-absorbed and thinking of his own needs, not the needs of his dying wife. What are you doing here? President Tom asks Izzy. The tone of his voice is somewhat annoyed and confused as to why Izzy would be interrupting him. Again, he only thinks of his own feelings. Take a walk with me. President Tom instantly declines her offer and uses the research as an excuse not to be with her. I have too much work. The tone of his voice is not impressed. He's implying that Izzy's a nuisance and should just let him do his work. The close-up on his face shows President Tom's distress. He's puzzled as to why Izzy wants to take a walk, when she should know he's trying to find a cure for her. He makes the situation all about him, and we can see this through all his eye statements. As the scene progresses, President Tom lashes out at Izzy, because he's getting frustrated at the fact that she does not seem to appreciate the work he's doing. Please, Izzy. President Tom voice deepens and the tone is much heavier. He is only getting aggressive. In today's world, we often see this through the young people. Many adolescents now do not often think about others. They only think about what they can do for themselves or how, the benef or how can they can benefit from a situation. Young people are less caring than what they used to be. A recent study shows that college students, quote, are about 40% lower in empathy than their counterparts of 20 or 30 years ago. Psychologist Jean Twenge has labelled the current generation of young people the I generation or generation me, unquote. Another characteristic trait of narcissism is superiority. President Tom enjoys the fact that Izzy is inferior towards him so he can be there to pick her up. When Izzy feels down or disappointed, President Tom is immediately there to comfort her because he is in his own element where he feels like he is in control of the situation. In this scene, Izzy pleads to President Tom to heat the sponge up. Wait, the sponge, I want you to heat it up. The tone of her voice is weak, indicating that she is in need of present Tom, and of course he does it because Izzy has proven to him that she's fragile and cannot do things on her own. The medium shot of present Tom's face shows that he feels sorry for her. To the audience it looks like he's being caring, but underneath it he, he's looking down on Izzy because he thinks she's incompetent. As the scene progresses, there's a slight low angle of present Tom's discerning face showing us that in the situation he is in control. As soon as she says I'm afraid, President Tom is now in complete control of the situation. Izzy has let her walls down so he can enter in power over her. In today's world, we often see this in the political world, where the, a mayor or senator holds the power and feeds off the weak people who sit beneath them. They are power-hungry politi politicians who will never get enough. Another characteristic of narcissism is being completely selfish. Because he is dressed like a monk with a shaved head, Black robes, we instantly think that future Tom is a good man worthy of our trust and anyone's trust, but in reality he is not. He is eating the bark so he can stay alive. His actions display complete selflessness because the only person benefiting from the situation is him. Future Tom is only concerned with his own pleasure or benefit. He is blind to reality and has wrapped himself up in his own little world. Whispering words like, you're strong enough, it's okay will make it, indicates to us that he is only comforting the tree so it can live. 
The way that he and the tree are isolated together in space also shows extreme selfishness. He is not sharing the tree. He disregards the tree. And when the tree dies, Fletcher Tom immediately blames the tree, not himself. He doesn't acknowledge his rude behaviour. This is obvious behaviour of someone who is extremely selfish. He is in denial and blame and cannot accept the fact that the tree died because of him. Selfishness in this day and age can relate to humanity. The more money people earn, the more selfish and self-consumed they become. We live in a world where our lives revolve around money, and when something goes wrong, we blame everyone else but ourselves. Humanity becomes greedy, just like future Tom did when he kept eating the tree. Because of his narcissistic ways, President Tom's wife eventually dies, because he has been ignoring her for so long with his superiority, self-centered and aggressive behavior. He saw his only love die, and he could not do anything about it. This is the same for future Tom. Future Tom. He becomes so selfish with the tree that it eventually dies. Aronofsky is trying to teach us the lesson that if you become too self-consumed, the people or the things that mean the most to you start to fade away from your life. The Spanish Inquisition was procedurally run by the Grand Inquisitor, who established local tribunals of the Inquisition. This has been proven to be the darkest period of time for the Catholic Church. The Inquisition was established in 1233 by Pope Gregory VI to fight off any Protestant threat. The Catholic Church will go to extreme lengths to torture, dehumanize, and murder innocent thousands of people who were suspected of heresy. We see this when the Grand Inquisitor puts people to death. There is a medium long shot of people who are accused heretics that are being hung upside down, half naked, and tied at the ankles by chains. As they are being condemned to death, the chain is getting loose and the accused fall to their death. This is like how Jesus was put to death. He was tried and they could find no wrong. The Grand Inquisitor is like Pontius Pilate, condemning innocent people to death. This shows the lengths that the Catholic Church would go to, and it shows the dark side of the Catholic Church. There is a zooming shot of the Grand Inquisitor whipping his own back. To him, this was the closest way to get to God, through pain. And by doing this, he thought he was doing God's will. As the scene progresses, he smears blood onto the map of Europe. This is shown by a bird's eye view zooming out. This displays the greediness and the true evilness of the Catholic Church. His blood is a symbol for the Inquisition. By smearing it on Spain, he indicates to us that he will conquer Spain. This illustrates that the Catholic Church and the Inquisition is like Izzy's tumor, growing out of control. The Roman Catholic Church tried to save their faith in their church, but they did it in a monst monstrous way. They were calculated acts of cruelism and terrorism. Instead of building the church up, they built a system that all people feared. In history, there have been many times where innocent people were being mistreated, like the Jews who were brutally murdered just because of their race and religion. Today, we still see this with innocent people who are murdered or being hurt just because of their different skin colors or just because of their different religion. In the film, Izzy says that first father sacrificed himself and created the earth. This information is incorrect. The real mind myth, the Pol Pol Buh, states that the sea and the sky deities created the earth. Their spirit essence and miraculous power gave the earth energy. Now the earth had a heart, calling it Heart Earth. The deities planted a small seabird tree to separate the sky from the earth, which reached to the skies and went down through all the levels of the underworld to make space for all life. First plants were created, then animals were. But the deities wanted people to worship them, so they made two attempts of making humans from mud and wood. Neither did satisfy as they were soulless and could not worship properly. Hero twins Hunafu and Shablanque defeated the death lords of the underworld in a ball game. This resulted in their father Hun Hunafu first father coming back to life as the maze god. The hero twins climbed to the top of the earth, creating the sun and the moon, and the deities created humans from ground maze and blood, and these people of the maze were formed in the name and were given the name Maya. The creation story that Izzy tells is that first father is the very first human being, and that the tree of life bursted out of his stomach, and that his body became the tree and the roots, spreading and forming the earth.
His soul became the branches rising up, forming the sky. All that remained was his head, and his children hung it in the sky, creating Shababa. This vision is not right, as it twists the real truth of the mind creation myth. The deities are the ones who created the earth, not First Father. First Father was not the first human. He was just the god of the maze that helped create the first humans. And Shababa has always been in the underworld. Shababa translates to a place of fear. That is cultivated, it is cultivated by the dead spirits who worship death. Shababa is full of mortal suffering, including disease, pain, starvation, fear, loss, and death itself.